Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So today we have the Jordan 39, um, a shoe that was debuted back in April, May, and Paolo Benchero was the face of that debut. This is a shoe that on paper is poised to be the best shoe of 2024. It features full length Zoom Air, full length Zoom X, and then all wrapped up in a premium package. Um, but the real question is, is this really going to be the shoe of 2024, or is this a shoe that was over-engineered to the detriment of the athlete? And that's what we're setting out to answer today. But before we get into the review, if you can like, subscribe, and comment, it definitely helps the video get some more exposure, uh, get some more eyes on the video, and then obviously um, helps it get into other people's feeds. Um, but without further ado, let's get into this review. Now, starting with the packaging, as we always do, one of the great things that Jordan brand has a tendency to do is just kind of level up the uh, packaging experience, especially for the mainline signature shoes. So for the Jordan 39, that is no exception. It is a completely stark white box um, that is actually featuring kind of like a linen pattern on the outside that is very reminiscent to what you would see on like a high-end luxury good, like a uh, Louis Vuitton type of product. Um, you have the Air Jordan and Type 39 for the 39th signature shoe uh, as a sticker on top of the box. And then you have uh, like printed in a matte white finish, um, the Air Jordan logo, um, kind of uh, significant for the era for the Jordan 9. Um, now on the ends of the box, you have a, uh, again, a printed Nike Air logo on either end of the box. And then you have obviously the size label. Once you lift the actual uh, shoe box, you actually are presented with um, pretty high-end uh, like tissue paper. This isn't your run-in-the-mill tissue paper. This is tissue paper debossed with the stylized 29 logo that you're gonna see all throughout the shoe. When you lift the paper up, you have the uh, obviously the shoes, but then if you take everything outside of the box, you actually are presented with a photo, like a mirror photo of Jordan kind of driving to the basket. Um, and that is kind of in the vein of the Amma Manier partnership that we've seen over the years. They kind of feature some type of a photo or anything, something like that inside of the box. But overall, the, the packaging and the presentation for the Jordan 39 is fantastic. It is high end and is kind of what I've come to expect from Jordan brand at this point in time. Over on the design side, the Jordan 39 is really a very clean, very minimalist shoe. It is pretty much devoid of any real branding or logos with the exception of the tongue area, which you obviously have that giant Jumpman logo surrounded by a rubber dice texture. And that texture is very reminiscent or paying homage to the Jordan 9, that little rubber puck on the heel tab of that specific shoe, the Jordan 9. Um, on the medial and lateral sides, you have a, an embroidery pattern that is supposed to be data driven and intended to help with containment and fit, obviously, and keep the foot on the footbed. Um, over on the heel counter area, you have a little plastic piece that is debossed with the Air Jordan word mark. And then below that, you have that stylized 29 debossed into the outsole of the shoe. Moving around to the front of the shoe, you again have that stylized 29 um, kind of debossed into the tongue area. And then right below that, you have what looks to be kind of like a symbol for like a two-way player. Obviously, Jordan was a, a terrific defensive player and a terrific offensive player. Um, and I think that's what that is supposed to signify. But overall, the Jordan 39 is a very clean design. It is very minimalist. Um, and I do appreciate that. Moving on to the materials, you actually have a shoe that is a mixture of raw materials. You have leather hits on the toe box and on the heel counter area. Um, it does feel like a soft premium type of leather. And then you actually have textiles. Again, as I said, you have that embroidery pattern on the medial and lateral sides, but it's a good mixture of textiles and leather. Um, and it is set up to be a kind of premium package. And for all intents and purposes, they have executed that really, really well, especially on this colorway dubbed Soul. Now we talked about the materials and obviously when we talk about materials, we talk about weight. The weight on the Jordan 39 is actually kind of in line with some of the other shoes I've tested this year. In a size 12 and a half, the Jordan 39 comes in weighing 17 ounces or 483 grams. It is a pretty uh, well distributed shoe in terms of weight. There is no real heavy spots. What they do with the outsole and the uppers and things like that, especially including raw materials, they do a good job of just weight distribution. So the shoe doesn't feel any bit of that 17 ounces. And when I'm playing in the shoe, I didn't notice the weight whatsoever. 
Over on the fit and containment side, the Jordan 39 was a little bit of a tricky situation. I decided to go with a 12 and a half just to be on the safe side. I wasn't really sure what to expect, especially with the Jordan, uh, Jordan brand's mainline signature shoes. I've never really had a whole lot of luck with those. So going with the 12 and a half, right from the start, they didn't fit incredibly well. But what I noticed after about four or five hours, they started to not only break in, but really conform to my feet. So if I'm making a recommendation for fit, I would actually recommend going true to size. Um, I think I could have gotten away with going with a size 12 and just playing them a little bit just to break them in. Um, but definitely go true to size. And then in terms of the containment part of it, the containment was a little bit tricky because there's no real outrigger or anything like that. And we'll get into that with the uh, traction part of the review. But in terms of containment, there's no real outrigger. So there's not a whole lot of stability. And then you have a shoe that is sitting on kind of like a double stack zoom type of setup that zoom X and then you have full length zoom makes the shoe very, very soft and squishy. So there's not a whole lot of stability in that way. And again, with the lack of an outrigger, there is the chance that you can kind of roll your ankle. I never had that, uh, that problem, fortunately, but it is something that you want to keep in mind is that you don't have that kind of, um, lateral support and, you know, falling off the footbed or twisting your ankle is something that could possibly happen. The Jordan 39 features a setup of bottom loaded full length zoom air, which is actually uh, visible through that translucent outsole. And then on top of that, you have Nike's premium foam technology in Zoom X. And as we talked about before, Zoom X is a P backspace foam, which is known for its high energy return. Now you have these two technologies sandwiched on top of each other. And what you actually have in practice is a shoe that ends up being a little bit too squishy, um, a little bit too unstable because of that lack of an outrigger. Um, so I think they just kind of went overboard with the cushioning and I can't believe I'm saying that because I, I feel like I'm the kind of person that says, bring on all the cushioning you can. I want zoom air everywhere. Um, but in this case, it's just a little bit too much. I think in hindsight, Nike could have gone with just zoom X or just full length zoom air um, and kind of achieved the desired results that they were looking for. Um, if you're looking for a shoe that has good court feel, low profile, this isn't going to be that. Um, you're going to want to look elsewhere. Um, if you're a big, like a center power forward type of player looking for max cushioning, this is the shoe for you. It is premium cushioning technology all wrapped up in a premium package. Now, when it comes to the traction for the Jordan 39, they weren't the best traction I've ever tested. They weren't by no means the worst. They were just okay. They were passable. Um, in the very beginning on a relatively clean court, I did get that tackiness um, when I was making my cuts and things like that. But as I played in them more, um, I lost that tackiness. Even after kind of wiping the shoe, I wasn't getting of that any of that grip that I got in the very beginning, which just tells me that the rubber was wearing down. So on a hardwood floor, um, on a relatively clean court, I wasn't getting like great traction. And if you're playing on an outdoor court, you're probably gonna chew through that traction, especially, especially on that translucent outsole. So if you're looking for something a little bit more durable, you're probably gonna to wanna to go with um, a Jordan 39 PF, which is their overseas version that features an XDR outsole. But overall traction was just okay. <laughs> Now, when it comes to my recommendation for the Jordan 39, this is a shoe that is a bit of a hard shoe to recommend just because at $200, I think there are better options available at cheaper price points from various brands. Um, obviously, if you need to have this shoe as part of your collection, by all means do that. Um, but in terms of who is this shoe meant for, if you're a guard type of player that enjoys court feel, there's not a whole lot of court feel going on with the shoe just because of all of the cushioning that it has. Um, it's a bit muted. Now, if you're a big, like a center, power forward type of, type of player that enjoys maximum cushioning, the Jordan 39 is your shoe. But again, I recommend these shoes when they go on sale, when they inevitably go on sale at about $130, $140. Um, so if you're able to wait, by all means wait. And that will just about wrap it up for this video. If there's anything I missed or anything you would like to know about the Jordan 39, please leave a comment. If you liked this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a great day.